Hello everybody and welcome back to Bandwagon Sports. Quickly before this video begins, I would like to thank you all for helping us hit 200 subscribers on this community. Um, hit it a couple days ago. We're currently sitting at 204, so we've had good growth over the past few days. But uh, just dream come true, honestly, how, how far this channel has come in 2021. And I'm so thankful, even with COVID and all, I'm so happy that us hockey fans can come together, talk about hockey, enjoy a great space here on Bandwagon Sports. And I'm just forever grateful for you guys. Um, new goal for 2021. 250 it's not impossible we've had some great growth over the past few days so if that growth continues we will hit 250 subscribers but i'm just so thankful for everything that you guys have done this year for me i mean i'm so i'm so appreciative of it of it and um yeah without further ado let's hop in to the actual video so today we are going to be talking about a New York Rangers issue. I haven't talked a lot about the Rangers, but today I'm going to be talking about Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere, the Rangers' second and first overall pick from 2019 and 2020, respectively. And man, these players, so much potential. I, I don't think that they're going to be busts, but I think the conversation has to be said with how much Capo Caco, at least especially, has struggled his first three seasons in the NHL, and Alexi Lafreniere not really living up to any expectation as well. So I did want to talk about these players for you know a little bit of time today and really just go over my thoughts on this issue with Capo, Caco, and Lafreniere because these are guys that I scouted myself and you know Lafreniere and Caco I both had being pretty big as scores at the NHL level and so far I just haven't seen that game translate at all so without further ado let's hop into today's video. So first I'm going to talk about Alexi Lafreniere since I think that he is the least concerning out of these two. Currently, in 14 games played, he has three goals, four points, he's a minus three and has eight penalty minutes. And, you know, neither of these guys not scoring is not affecting the Rangers' season at all. They're currently sitting third in that Metro division, tied for, tied for third, tied for second, with 19 points. So they're having a fantastic season uh, without Lafreniere and Kako, uh, and Kako chipping in, sorry. But Lafreniere, only four points in 14 games this year, really not playing well last year. He had 21 points in 56 games, so he was on about a 35, a 30 point pace, maybe 35 if he got hot at all. But really, when you were, when we're taking a look at a guy like Alexi Lafreniere, the the type of season we expected in his rookie year, we were expecting Calder. I mean, he was so dynamic in the QMJHL, one of those guys that you just expect to hop into the NHL right away and succeed. And this is another thing I'm going to talk about briefly in this video. NHL draft picks, I mean, even though they look superb in junior, superb in Europe, wherever they're playing, honestly, it might have to be said that number one overall draft picks might not live up to that first two, three season hype that we've come to know, at least not rookie season hype. I mean, an 18-year-old stepping into the NHL, that's a big jump for these guys. And when we're really looking at it, we might come to expect an 18-year-old first overall, second overall, third overall guy not to put up Calder ready numbers. And honestly, from the past few years, what I've seen out of rookies, Rasmus Dahlin, the exception, that just might be how things are. These guys might take another another couple years after they're drafted first or second overall to kind of get comfortable in even a top six role, start scoring at a decent pace. And, you know, maybe by the time they're 23, 24, they have at least somewhat reached that potential. That's just what I've seen out of the past few years. So, Tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to get back on topic with the video now. So yes, Alexi Lafreniere, 4 points in 14 games, which isn't awful. I mean, that's a third line scoring forward right there. But honestly, when I look at last year to this year, I don't see any progression in Lafreniere's game. If anything, there's just nothing. And you know, Lafreniere, I don't think the Rangers can ruin him. And Gerard Gallant coming in to that system, I made a video about that. I said I really think that he's going to help these guys develop. So far, it hasn't happened. Maybe, you know, again, they just need a couple more years to develop. But Lafreniere is one of those guys who was really drafted to be a dynamic two-way forward, playmaking winger, one of those guys who can be a franchise-altering guy from the wing. And in the QMJHL's draft year, he had 77 assists, 112 points. He was dynamic defensively, dynamic offensively. He was excellent in both zones, all three zones, actually, the neutral zone included. And I just have not seen anything that you know, resembles Alexi Lafreniere in the QMJHL uh, translate to the NHL yet. And again, this is a guy I don't think the Rangers are going to ruin. When we're talking about bust potential for Lafreniere, I think that Lafreniere will still be a great middle six player. 
nonetheless, I do think maybe it'll take him a couple of years to get to that point um, from what I've seen from him so far, but who knows, we're still only 14 games into the 2021 NHL season, so there's really no need to quite rush on the Lafreniere bust hype train. I know a lot of people are kind of saying it, but no need to rush. There's still lots of hockey to play, and Lafreniere could easily just pick it up any game and just, just ride momentum, go for a 40-50 point season, and that would be excellent. I would love to see him do that because Lafreniere is a guy who I have really high on my radar um, in terms of potential and in terms of future franchise-defining players. Lafreniere has that potential, but right now he's just not playing up to that expectation. And yes, I was correct. Alexi Lafreniere is currently on pace for like the exact same season as last year. Actually a bit worse. He's taken a step back this year. Currently in an 82 game proje uh, projection, he's projected for 18 goals, six assists, which obviously isn't going to hold up. Minus 18 as well, but 23 points. That is what? Two more than last season, and he played 56 games last year. So Lafreniere, just not playing well. He's taken a step back from his QMJHL draft year. He's taken a step back from last year to this year. And right now, I'm really not liking what I see out of Lafreniere. So again, I'm not going to put the bus potential on him quite yet. But like I said with that bus potential, a guy who can fit into that middle six scoring role, you might be able to, de to develop his defensive game a little bit more. He has a great defensive game, really just not showing right now. Um, but yeah, Lafreniere, just not playing well. And even before Capo Capo was drafted in that 2019 draft, I even said that, you know, this guy could really do well with the year of AHL conditioning. And maybe if he's point per game, plays well in the AHL, you bring him up for a stint. But I think that Capo Capo after his draft year, really did need that big confidence booster coming over to North American ice, you know, a smaller ice surface. Just play him in the AHL to start the year to, you know, get him used to the North American ice surface, get that confidence way up there so that when he does come to the NHL, he's ready, he's prepared, and he's going to put points on the board. And honestly, I just don't think the Rangers have really done a great job with Kako or Lafreniere's development. Um, I mean... Obviously, with Capo Caco, it's it's really concerning to see that he has not produced at all like you would expect, um, like you would expect a number two overall draft pick to. And again, this is kind of what I'm saying with uh, what I said at the beginning of the video, where you know you might not expect number one or number two overall draft picks to put up like excellent numbers their first few seasons in the NHL, and I I do think that that's where the NHL is kind of going, leaning more in that development direction, where even past 18 years old when they're drafted first overall, that development stage can go until they're 20 years old, and then you call them up to the NHL, but Capo Caco currently injured, he'll be out for I don't know how long, few weeks or something like that, but no points in 10 games, I mean what kind of season do we expect out of Capo Caco? I don't know, I... Personally, I don't think he stays in the NHL. I think that Capo Caco, like, desperately needs to go down, down to the AHL. The Rangers just have to commit at this point. You have to take a look at a guy like Capo Caco if you're management and say, okay, what are we going to do here? Because if they keep playing him at the NHL in the lineup, I think that he's going to be ruined. I'm sorry, but let's talk about Capo Caco's bus potential. Capo Caco's bus potential is a guy who I think can easily fizzle out of the league in the next two to three seasons, kind of like an Ali Yakupov if he doesn't get some serious help. And I know a lot of other NHL YouTubers, at least uh, O Nyquist is one of them who I watched a video on about this topic um, and just kind of reading up on it and stuff. A lot of people don't think Capo Caco will fizzle out of the league, but he's taken a step back this year. And last year, sure, he took a step forward defensively, Offense was a little bit better, but I mean, it's just, it's just like, here I'm looking at Capo Caco. He hasn't put a single point on the board, and I, it looks like he's just taken a, a huge step back, both offensively and, and defensively. So, really what I have to say is that Capo Caco's bust potential. He's going to fizzle, fizzle out of the league in the next two to three seasons, probably go back to Finland if he does not get fixed, and... Who knows, Capo Caco might even be frustrated in, in himself and go back to Finland. It might not even be that an NHL team doesn't want him. So here's what I'm going to say. As soon as Capo Caco comes back from injury, this is a guy you have to put in the AHL. If you do not put this guy in the AHL, if you're Rangers management, I'm sorry, but you're you're ruining potentially your best prospect. And it, it's just really disappointing to me, just overall.
So finally, what can we expect with these guys moving forward this season, next season, future? This season, I think Lafreniere will eventually adjust. I do think he just needs a little bit more time. He hasn't even played a full NHL season's worth of games yet. So looking at that, you you don't have to you know you don't have to worry about Lafreniere quite yet. If we have this conversation next year and he's doing the same thing, then maybe it's time to say, okay, what's his bust potential? For me, it's that middle six scoring kind of winger, a guy who can maybe pot 15-20 in the net 40 points. Definitely not that number one winger potential you want out of Lafreniere, but at least it's something. I don't think the Rangers management is bad enough to ruin a guy like Lafreniere, but that's at least what I think about him. And when it comes to Capo Caco, I think there is a lot of concern right now if you're a Rangers fan or a member of the uh, Rangers management. I think you really need to look at a guy like Capo Caco and really be patient with him. Send him down to the AHL. He is 21, which means, you know, time for development is very scarce at this point. NHL players, I don't know how it is for other sports. I mean, I kind of do, but NHL, usually a guy should be fully developed by the age of 25. That's four years away, four or five years away for Capo Caco. And so far, I have not liked what I've seen out of him in his first three seasons, so send him down to the AHL. If he plays well, bring him back up. It could be a whole different story that we're looking at if Capo Caco just gets that time to adjust at a slightly lower level to gain that confidence back, because right now, I think his confidence is at an all-time low, and it's really showing in his performance, and I don't think that injury is going to help either. And the bust potential for Capo Caco, I think he's a guy who could easily just be out of the league by the time he is 25 if if Rangers management does not find a way to fix him does not find a way to be more patient with him and really do what's the correct thing for his development so we'll see what happens but that's really all I wanted to talk about today and I did go on a little bit of a rant here because it is really disappointing when you know these top prospects don't produce and management really doesn't do anything about it. I mean, a Lafreniere is even a guy who I could see going down to the AHL for a conditioning stint. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like and smash that subscribe button. Again, so thankful for 200 subscribers. I mean, I really appreciate it, guys. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So I'll see you all in the next one. But for now, bye.